Oh, dude, the other day, man, I, I wanted to record a video for like, just for my view, for my Discord. And the yeah. thing is like on my OBS, the way it looks, um, you have like start streaming. The buttons are start streaming, start recording. And I hit start streaming as I was trying to just record a video. So I ended up uh -oh. going live for like a minute. I was like, thank God I was dressed. Well, I mean, I was recording a video for people. So yeah. I obviously still, but like I was, I was live on Twitch for 30 seconds or a minute. And then I saw people pop in my comments and I was like, why the fuck are people in my comments? I'm not live normally. And then and I was then like, like, wait, uh -oh. I'm actually streaming. Fuck. And I closed it. <laughs> Yeah, you always hear like these the stories of like streamers who forget to like stop recording sometimes or stop streaming and then they end up doing something that's really awkward. Yeah. That could have been you, man. Uh, I've, I've you. come close twice now uh, to doing that <laughs> yeah. because uh, there's another time where like I was live on TikTok and on Twitch and we raided someone and... Yeah. So, well, you've seen a raid. So when we raid someone, we're brought yeah. to someone else's audience. Uh, we raided someone. So on Twitch, I was like, all right, cool. I shut my stream off, but I forgot I was live on TikTok for a minute. Oh, and, I, wow. and like my first thought was to take my clothes off because I was sweating. That was during the summer. Yeah. And I didn't like, I was, I was just engaging within the raid. Like I was actually like <laughs> typing shit. And then someone just typed, Hey, you're still live on TikTok. On TikTok. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> and I was like, thank fucking Saved. God. I didn't get naked. Like <laughs> this could have once more, this could have gone real fucking bad. That's how you get banned. You know, uh, take your clothes off after us. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it happened twice. All right. I'm fully comfy too. I'm wearing sweatpants and everything. But now that the sun's coming out, I might regret that. Like get you a little bit hotter than you want to be. Yeah. I put this, and that's a proof of how much of a cloudy day it was. I put on a hoodie and sweatpants. And then the sun was like, oh, you thought I wasn't going to say hi today? Fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, whatever. Welcome uh, back, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Positive Shit Show, where you co-host Seb and Chris, or Chris and Seb, however you want to put it. Um... Thank you so much, everyone, for all the feedback we've been getting on the time episode. I'm actually getting a lot of DMs. I almost wish they'd send a DM to you and I. Like, yeah, <laughs> I almost wish I could create a DM setting for that because whenever it's about the podcast, like it's it's really cool messages to get. But um, a lot of you are really kind. Once again, if you want to make sure that Chris does read all the cool things you're thinking about the podcast, be sure to leave a comment below the video on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any of the podcasting thing, you're still freaking amazing. I don't know if there's a rating system, but if there is, would you mind considering, you know, maybe, maybe leaving us a really good review? Um, it's up to you. I'm just saying it'd be fun. It could, it could help us a bunch. Definitely would. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, the, the feedback was really cool. I enjoy it. And uh, we, I did a premiere again, so I get to see the live reactions and so much of the things we say. First of all, last week's episode, I had those reactions listening to it. So what I do usually is we'll record and I have a few days before I need to edit. And I don't watch it right away. Like I don't, I don't edit the day that we record. I could easily record on the same day and then edit the, the, that night and have it ready to go but I usually give it a few days and so when I was listening to last last episode I was actually like wait we said those things holy <laughs> fuck it's true when you you go back to them you're like oh my gosh that that was me saying that <laughs> dude we come up with stuff sometimes I'm I, I mean I'm surprised of us you know uh, yeah. if you're watching on YouTube the lighting is going to be messed on my end because the sun doesn't know what it wants today uh, it's a cloudy day, but also a big old sunny day at the same time. Like it's an in and out type thing and I can't control it. So we're going to make do with this for this week. Subject brought to us by our beautiful Chris right here. Um, masculinity. Hey, yo, Chris, you a dude? Yes, I am. Are you a man? <laughs> Are you a man? Yes, sir. I am. Are I am you a man? A man. <laughs> All right. What, 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 what is, what, is, what is it to be a man? What makes us a man? Yeah, well, that's a, a very big question and it's tough to answer because there's no right answer necessarily and there's no specific answer as well. But I don't know, I just think it's ultimately I feel it's just being a good person is what being a man is, but it's just what being a human is in general. 
you know, but uh, if we go into the specific, specifics of being a man, that's something that's a little bit more difficult to, you know, to, to assess. Mm -hmm. So um, personally, I was raised, I don't know, I don't know. I actually don't know how your dad was in terms of like teaching you masculinity. I was raised with like, I mean, you, you met my stepdad. So yeah. th that was the father figure I had. And I was raised with the most toxic <laughs> masculinity yeah. That you could be raised with. It was insane. And no, not allowed to cry because I was a because I was a boy and I was gonna be a man. Men don't cry, men don't have feelings. Um yeah, supposedly. <laughs> men don't complain. Like it was all the I mean, they do, but you know, like I it was so, so toxic. Uh I even if I look back to my family, I used to kiss everyone goodnight, right? Like it's a simple thought. You just kiss people goodnight. And it used to be like, I don't know, I was three or four or five. I don't fucking know how old I was. And it would be like a, a peck on the lips, like a mm. good night. And um this man, my stepdad, <laughs> he's not my stepdad to so anyone wondering now. He was for a lot of years. And uh so this man was the one person that made me feel bad about doing that. And to this day, my grandma will still give a peck to her sons, my uncles, and I hug my family. I don't kiss anyone. I feel weird about kisses on the cheeks. Like this is aftermath years. I'm a fucking grown up adult. This guy is not in my life. And I and still, still reacting like that for Christmas, for any family dinner that I go see my family and I'll see my uncles kiss their mom on the lips. And like, you know, a peck. And right away, my brain goes, bruh, this shit's weird. It ain't manly. Like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Um, yeah. All that to say, this is going to be a fun episode to talk about because this is actually like, I have a lot of traumas related to that man and the things that he taught me. Actually, I had a flashback of that yesterday in the shower. Dude, how did, how did you come, like, how did you pick that up? I don't up? know. It, it just happened, I guess. So yesterday I'm in the shower and I hear this one, I don't know, it was like a little, hmm, like this sound in a, in a song and it reminded me of a childhood memory. So the man was super toxic. He was toxic, masculinity, a hundred percent. But um, just hearing a little like, hmm, hmm, uh, it reminded me of a childhood memory that I have with this guy. And it's a, uh, we used to like whenever we'd go to a restaurant, we would uh, play the the game that you could, the like the claw thing that gets teddy or oh, okay, yeah. stuffed animals. And he was actually like really good, so we would always leave with a stuffed animal within like a dollar or two, like of playing the game. Um, and he used to do this where like while we drive away from the restaurant, he would make the teddy the the stuffed animals. He'd make them drive, and he would give them a voice and emotions. And uh, it was almost like a puppeteering act every time. It was just like a fun little skit of giving voices and sounds to a to a stuffed animal. Uh, but right away, as I got that memory, which was a long lost memory that I have not thought about since the day possibly happened, uh, right after, I was like, damn, I guess I do have traumas related to that man. <laughs> Wow. It's like all my, all my memories have been almost like erased. They're gone. They're it's a fucking weird thing. Yeah. Um. But how was how did your dad raise you? Like, were you yeah. was it were you feelings? Like, what what was it? Yeah. What was your dad teaching you yeah, in terms was, of being well, a man? Typical, typical father. Like, well, he wasn't. He wasn't. I don't believe he was necessarily um a bad father in the sense that he was never someone who said, "Well, boys don't cry. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that." But he was a man of few words, if I could say that like that. Um, he didn't. I think the the issue that we had the most was um, expressing emotions, like the simplest things: joy, anger, sadness. All those things are things I didn't really see from my dad, as well as my mom. So I think it was more linked to a, a cultural thing more than uh what it is to be a man type of situation. But yeah, my father. It was it was mostly the the emotional side that I didn't get. And it, but there was never a um, a way that I should have reacted to certain situations. He never told me like, well, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be crying because of this. You shouldn't be a, a certain way because of that. It's just he never really talked about that, and he never really elaborated those things. So me growing up, obviously, I wasn't didn't know how to express my emotions. And I guess the best way for me was to try to use words, mm -hmm. but not necessarily show my feelings. 
So I know I do have a slight disconnect when it comes to showing uh, anger as much as happiness, as much as uh, emotions in general because of that, you know, and I, I think it's just something I didn't, I haven't, I never talked to with my, my father. So I, I guess there's an element of that that I'm missing at this mm-hmm. point in my life that I'm trying still to develop, but he was never the, the type of person that would uh, tell me not to feel a certain way, but I just basically lived looking at how, how my father reacted to things. And he was very stoic most of the time. You know, he would, he would never really show if he was happy, sad. You know, the, I think the only instances I did see that was when I was maybe on the field and he would come to my, my games. That's when I would see him actually being like showing certain emotions. Otherwise, usually it was mostly a, a stoic. I've seen your dad on the sidelines. Oh exactly. yeah, he gets, oh he gets yeah. Pretty, uh, he gets he's a he's a very supportive dad in that sense. But uh, like I said, generally, uh, it was he was a very stoic person. So it was difficult to kind of to kind of understand how, like what a certain feeling, what was a certain feeling that you should have or that you could have at mm-hmm. a certain period of time because he never really showed uh, those. And um, I think like. Obviously, we don't become men just from having men in our lives. No. So let me flip it and say, what did your mom teach you about being a man? Yeah. Well, like it's almost the same thing as my father in the sense that in terms of um, how to react to things, how to feel based on certain things. My mother was also a pretty stoic person and she was even probably even more like, uh, how do I say, she was more firm on things than my father. So like if any, anything happens, she was like, you know what? Don't even think about it. Think about the next thing. Don't even get mad, mad, angry, sad or whatever. Just go on, move on to the next thing, you know? So in that sense, my mother also um, just told me, you know, you don't need to, you, you don't need to feel a certain way. Just move on to the next thing without necessarily acknowledging things. And she never really gave me cues on how to be a man, but just, she always told me re- whatever you do, respect a woman. You know, mm-hmm. and whatever that means, it means to acknowledge her, to be on the same footing as her and to just be willing to accept what she's telling you as well. And to be able to, to, you know, have a positive feedback on that, you know? So that, that was a, the, the main thing I do remember from my mom saying is always respect a woman, no matter what, they're as important as you, and she's going to take care of you as much as you have to take care of her. So just make sure that, uh, you know, you always respect a woman no matter what. That's the the, the part I remember from my mom, especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think in a weird way, moms have a lot to do in how we become men. Of course. Um, well, anyone in your life has an impact on yeah. how you become a man, I think. But like for, I was also, I'm raised by a single mom. So mm-hmm. I had my stepdad for a lot of years. And then my mom was, I feel like my mom had to not only raise me, but she had to repair all the fucked up things. Mm-hmm. Like my mom had to almost like fix my mis, like fix my mishap, mishappenings, miss, I don't know the Mishaps. word. Mishaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, she had to fix those, you know, not only like, did she have to teach me how to be a human being, but she also had to teach me like to this day, I know my mom wishes I could feel more emotions and like, I'm opening up to that. I'm, I've been working on that for years now. Um, yeah. but I just, I still know that to this day, my mom wishes I didn't go through all those things and, um, that I could just be open, like without all the walls that were built over the years. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Uh, I, can, I can agree on, on you on that sense that, you know, I have two sisters as well. So two older sisters. Yes. And I think that also had a, a big influence in my life in a sense that, you know, I kind of, I saw what my sisters went through when it came to other men. And there's periods of times where all, when they were, they're teenagers, they're much older than me. So I was pretty much a, a, a child when they were teenagers. And um, I used to hear things, see things. And I was like, wow, I can't believe certain guys act like that with my sister. You know, I, I hope I, I wouldn't act like that with a, a woman as well. So I think that's a big element as well. That kind of, you know, told me to how to be as, as a man, you know, how, yeah. to, how to be someone who's nice and kind to, to women and to respect them the way I hoped that those boys would respect my sisters, you know? For sure. I a hundred percent. I think, um, like it has a bit, a big impact. I just realized now, and I don't know why, or I guess I just forgot because I knew it, but we're both babies. Like we're both the baby of our yeah, family. Exactly. Yeah. Um, sure. I have my older sister and I grew up with the step family. So I was the youngest of like five kids mm-hmm. and, uh, and it's, you have your two older sisters. So both you and I got to, uh, 
which there's a lesson there, I think, too. There's like um, being the youngest, first of all, you get a bit more freedom, but you also get lessons yeah. through every single other thing, like a other yeah. person that goes see, through this you stuff before you. People make mistakes and you kind of don't have to do them because you've seen them, right? So you kind of yeah. have less, less of an excuse. <laughs> I wonder if that makes us observant. Like, I, I wonder if the youngest child, uh, the youngest children of each family or child of each family um, is more observant in a way than yeah. I should not be playing with the lens in my hands. That is, <laughs> that is money that you don't want to play. I was just like tossing yeah. it in my hands and I was like, no, this is Throwing stupid. <laughs> um, um, no, but definitely. And I, it, it yeah. was the same, like my sister's older, but my sister, my sister's uh, challenged. And so I was raised as a younger kid, but I was like, there was a few lessons that my mom always, first of all, I got to see my mom date a few men, like a, yeah. a good number, a good number of men. And, um, she made it so clear that I had to treat women right because I've seen like my mom's been treated badly by men mm -hmm. and she hasn't been the luckiest in terms of partners. Um, yeah. And so the two things were always clear. First, it was like, you need to be a good partner to whoever you're going to be with one day. And that means respecting them. That means opening up to them, being vulnerable with them. Mm -hmm. And, um, but she also established in me a, a need to protect. So as much as we're even, there was still like my sister being challenged. My sister's five years older than me, but I was technically older mentally than my sister. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she always said, if someone, if someone goes after your sister, you better fucking like defend her. Like yeah. you have to be the one. And so when my sister was, was actually the only fight I've ever been in my whole life, only fight, I've been in one fight my whole life. I was 12. My sister was 17. Yeah. And, and someone insulted my sister and I had to get in the fight. Um, and that was the only time I've ever actually been in a fight. I'm yeah. not going to talk about that fight. I don't care. It didn't go bad for me. Let's just say that. Um, but it was still like, <laughs> no, but in a way it was like, it was still, it was still like, it's weird to think, no, it is our job, but like that it's a part of masculinity, but like, Oh, I, I don't know. It's such a risky thing that, to that's say. Cause gonna, that's what I was going to say. Um, like to, I was going to ask like, what is, what was your view on a man having to, well, having the traditional role of being the provider, right? So mm -hmm. in your sense, you're saying yeah, you have to be the protector. So you have to kind of like provide, uh, you know, make sure that you provide pr protection if you want for your, your, your sister. Mm -hmm. And what were your views on that? Do you feel it's something that is uh, necessary and it's a, a necessary part of being a man as well? Yeah, I think the best way to put it for me personally is the only time I've ever had to actually protect put myself in a protecting, protecting position was actually only for men that didn't understand that. Because, um, even like, if I think about the situation I was raised in, which is my mom raising my sister and I, but my, my sister's Lebanese, her dad is Lebanese. And so first of all, I was raised thinking you need to protect your sister because your sister can't protect herself. But that was because of the challenge, not because of my sister being a girl, it was yeah. just because of the m mental challenge. And uh, so that was like the thing, because at the same time, I also knew about my mom leaving my sister's father. So my, my mom was married once and she was married to my sister's dad and he was Lebanese. Well, he is Lebanese. Um, and he's like very old school controlling of women. I don't know how he is today. I don't know that. I, I barely see him once a year, maybe when I'm back in Montreal and that's just cause he comes to see my sister and like I interact. Yeah. Um, but he was like very old school, very controlling. And so back when they were married, when my mom and him were married, he would make rules like say, you can't leave the house unless you ask blah, 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 blah. And my mom, I shit you not the way she left the house with my sister was she chased him with a knife. Um, she, he, he was being extremely controlling, extremely like, disrespectful, which my mom's purebred Quebecois, like badass woman. Like, yeah. Hey, listen, my family, I'll tell you that story after, but my family was like, was, we are raised knowing that women can beat the fuck out of you. Like, yeah. is, this is part of my family. Yeah. And it's like, you don't, you don't mess with that. And so that's what happened. There was a lot of like, obviously she was married with them for years. And like, uh, mm -hmm. that's why there's a five year difference between my sister and I, uh, they were, they were together for a long time and blah, 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 blah. But at some point it was too much. It was too controlling. And the only way for her to get out 
and not be controlled was to literally hold a knife, mm. point it at him and say, I'm leaving and I'm taking my daughter. And so in a way, I've known that since I was a baby. Like that was one of the yeah. first things I knew. I knew that my mom and all women therefore could be badass. Like my family was a lesson in don't you fucking think you can attack a woman because women yeah. can fucking defend themselves too. Just, just you wait. Um, but also on the other cool. hand, oh, sorry, go ahead. Keep going. No, well, yeah, it's cause it kind of glows, uh, it goes with it is yeah. growing up. Cause her dad is still very much involved with my, with my sister and, um, my sister needs the help of both her parents, obviously, because she's still going through it with the, with the challenge. It, I mean, and you know, this is a forever thing. Um, so growing up, I, still had to take a step in as the man because oftentimes when when my mom and her ex-husband my sister's dad would argue about my sister he would actually not listen to my mom or my sister because they were women and so their arguments would just go out the door uh and so many times from like age i don't know 11 like whenever i was old enough to understand that he needed to talk to a man I had to be next to my mom when she would be on the phone with him arguing to pick up the phone and say the same words, the exact same words my mom would say, but be a man saying those words. Yeah. And then it would be a conversation. He wouldn't yell at me. He never yelled at me once. Never. I yelled at him. I've, I've argued with him like very bad. So to, to like put everything together, I think in a way I always learned that girls can protect themselves just as much as we can. Um, the only times I've ever had to be protective or take that protecting position was from men who didn't understand that. Mm. Um, that's interesting. Cause like any guy that understands won't, won't fuck with anyone. Like the, the, yeah. it's simple. It's not about don't fuck with women. It's don't fuck with anyone in life. Just yeah, be respectful exactly. of other human beings. Yeah. And just, there's some people that don't understand that. And that's the only times I've ever had to step in when, when I got in that fight, it was the same thing. It was someone disrespecting my sister thinking, well, she's not going to do anything. And then yeah. because it was my sister, that was a different thing. It wasn't because she was a, a, a girl. They were, they were bullying my sister because she was challenged. Mm. And so I was like, well, fuck you, you fucking idiot. I'm here. And I'm like, <laughs> but other yeah. than that, like I've, I've, I've seen, you know, my family, I don't know. To, I, I think it's like a, in, in a sense, it's a, I, I guess a, a privilege that we've had in the sense that we've, we were able to see women in position of authority and strength. Like you've talked about your mother, how she, you know, she stands her ground when she feels that she needs to. And on my part too, my sisters, my mother, they, they were very strong, very independent. And I was able to see that and I was able to recognize, well, they don't need a, a man to, they don't need someone to, to protect them or to support them. To, to support, I mean, support them, yes, like in the sense that you've done for, for your sister. It's more of a, a support that you're, you're there for, but not in the sense that they can't do things for themselves, right? That's what I saw through my sisters. They're able to do whatever they, ha they had to do by themselves. They had their own... Uh, strength their own capacities capabilities as well and i recognize that that's why every uh every person that i uh, every person every woman that i see i recognize that they have as much power and as uh, as much strength as we have to do whatever they want right i don't feel like i need to be that type of person i, I don't see them as uh submissive beings whereas some people in, for some reason in this world they still feel like that's how it is right but that's mm -hmm. not at all what it is you know Wrong yeah. people footing. That's how I feel, and that's how I've seen it. Yeah, and that's uh, and once again. That, well, I was gonna say that's. To point, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is the first time we kind of. <laughs> We're not flowing together right now, I, Chris. Thing, right? What is going on? <laughs> but no, just to say that uh, I think it's the fact that we've had um, women <laughs> in our lives, and that they've had a important role and impact mm -hmm. and that gave us the opportunity to see different perspectives of women whereas some people may not have had that and maybe they see it from something else mm -hmm. and maybe that's what creates that idea that for some reason to be a man is to be the one who's in charge who's the provider who does everything and i guess it's a an element that uh, some men think is necessary to be fully an individual. I know. actually want to, I, I, I do want to go a little further into that as well, though, because that is the other side of the metal. Like right now we talked a lot about how men should, or what's the, what's the 
involvement or connection with men and women, like what's mm-hmm. in terms of masculinity, you know, but there is, uh, the providing part is still something that bugs me out. I think, yeah, I think it's one thing, still. one thing I've learned this year, which is because I've gotten healthy, the, the healthiest mentally, like I've ever been, like I'm in a good place and at least I have a good grasp of where I'm at. And, um, I'm not saying I'm great and I feel amazing every day, but I'm aware of everything. And I've, I've been in control of like, when it's, when it's a bad day, I'm aware it's a bad day and I know how to take care of myself. And when it's a good day, fuck, I know how to seize the good day. Yeah. But I've found that still in relationships. So this is a big thing that a lot of people are talking about, but like, what's a man valuable for? And it's oftentimes about what you bring to a relationship. Like, what do you bring? What's your financial situation? What's your literally like, can you, can you provide for the two or can you provide for yourself or blah, blah, blah. Like Mm -hmm. what you bring to the table, but also I've noticed, and that might just be me because I'm in a good place and not many people are in a good place, but I've noticed that me being a good place has been a bad thing. So as much as here's what it was, let, let me put a big old point on that. As a kid, growing up with that really toxic masculinity, I was taught you don't have emotions, you're not supposed to feel emotions, and that creates a lot of fucking damage. Mm. And for the longest time in my life, I wasn't open. Like all my exes, I apologized to each of <laughs> each of them, but like I was a piece of shit because I didn't I wasn't open to anything. Mm talking about vulnerable shit. I was like, fuck that. Just fix your shit up and don't be sad about it. Like that was what I was raised thinking. It was just like, fix it. Don't fucking waste time being sad or feeling emotions. It was like what I was, what I was taught. But so anyway, that created a lot of really bad things. And back then I had no problem getting in a relationship because I came off as, is she like poking you on the side? What's going on? Is your girlfriend poking (laughs) you? We're going to have to wait a quick second. We have a, we have a guest. Go for it. Are yeah, you gonna sorry. close the call? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, just give me a give me a, a sec. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> just mute up at least. I'll deafen yeah. so we don't hear him. Uh, just wave. All right. <laughs> uh, this is the nice intermission, everyone. I don't even know that we're gonna be able to finish this one in a full episode because this is a lot of things to talk about. Um, but I certainly hope we can get a good point across. I think. We're two guys talking about mess. Oh, you, you put your back your mic back on. Yes, I did it. Uh, uh, sorry, je 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 devrais déménager uh, dans une autre chambre parce qu'il est en train de faire uh, la nourriture puis, puis ça faire plein de bruit. So you're gonna pause it in the middle. Yeah, my All bad. All right, everyone, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a short intermission. Uh, we're just gonna relocate Chris, so we'll be yeah. right back in the magic of two seconds. Yep. And through the magic of editing, the 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 <laughs> we are now in a different location. Uh, <laughs> We so, have changed venues. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going where I was. Which so what I was saying was for a long time I was I was raised to like dismiss feelings, and so I was doing that to partners. I even forget what the point I was trying to make there was. There was like um. Well, what I think you're trying to say was that. The fact that you were taught not to express your emotions, express your feelings to your significant other kind of disrupted the dynamics of the relationship is what I think you're trying to say. For sure. Oh, there you go. No. Okay. I know where I was going. Yay. Good. <laughs> Actually, thank thank you for saying that because it's that's not what I was trying to say, but it brought it back. <laughs> so I least, least got you back. Y- you got me back. Yeah. No. So um, I think what that, the weird thing about that is that back then I used to have no problem at all getting a relationship. Like I was a serial dater back then. Like those years when I wasn't a good guy, when I wasn't, no, that's not true. I was always still a good guy because my mom taught me to respect women, but it was like, I was still not that great because I used to dismiss emotions and like blah, 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 all the toxic shit. But uh, what I've noticed from that is actually the difference today in my being healthy and it's that most people get scared by that. If mm-hmm. Right now, finding someone to to commit or stick together, almost impossible. Why? Just because I have my shit together. Isn't that fucked? Like as a man, I bring, if I, so there's been this, I have this idea. I think not this idea, but in our idea of relationship, I think th- our idea of relationship involves toxic masculinity 
that, 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 I couldn't say that proper, but I think, <laughs> I think it involves toxic masculinity in today's idea of relationships still. Mm. Um, obviously that's not a good relationship, but I think that's what the general relationship idea is. Um, and what pushes me to say that is that is like, whenever I've been really open about my feelings or about things, those people usually walk away. Um, yeah. Because you're not like, you're not acting as the man. Mm. And so it's really weird because I know that if I, uh, I don't know, man, it's, well, I feel I, like I, as I, guys, yeah, no, go, go. No, I was going to say, I think I get you in the sense because me, myself, I'm not like uh, your typical, if you want, like macho men, you know, even though I was, yes, an athlete and all that. And it's supposed to come with like the culture of being an athlete and everything. I wasn't your, that typical type of person. And sometimes you do feel in certain interactions that it's expected that you you be a certain type of guy. And when you're not, it's like if it's a, a letdown and they're like, well, you're not really like a you're not the, the the man I thought you would be because of this and that, because you're, you're not, you don't fill in these sort of standards of being a guy. And I, for me, it, it used to be an issue as well. Cause I was like, I don't understand. Like I'm, I'm a good person. I'm respectful. I take into account, you know, what the other person's saying. I'm not too forceful or pushy, but yet sometimes it doesn't end up to the conclusion. I think it would, it would lead me to, you know? So I do understand what you're saying in, in that sense. It's like when you do actually uh, want to express yourself and you're open enough to and willing to express yourself to the other person, sometimes it's seen as you actually being weak as opposed to you being strong to be willing to, yeah. you know, to show that you do have emotions and that you do feel certain things. So, And there's been certain instances too where I, you know, I did tell myself, you know, I'll open myself up to this person and ho hopefully it'll bring benefits. And sometimes it does the, the opposite, you know, back in the days when I, I used to be, a, you know, a, a single man as well. That's a, that's a while ago. That's for sure. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a while ago. <laughs> um, no, I think, and I think to some extent it's like, it's that, right. It's you're either the toxic masculinity or you're weak. That's like, you just, mm -hmm. you just, without saying that it's kind of like, but that, that fits it. Like it's usually that yeah. if you're, if you're a, a softer man, if you're more a kinder man, yeah, uh, you often don't come off as like the, the, person that all i don't know like so maybe it's because there's like a i feel there's a, a lack of nuance in the sense that when we do show vulnerability and emotion it's like if we now we have to manage to what extent we show it you know what i mean like when you do want to you feel like crying or just expressing yourself it's like well, now you're like oh, okay well we gotta wait a sec, you're only allowed to like be sad like once or twice a week to make sure that like you are emotional, but not too emotional because otherwise you're not like that man that we want you to be as well. So I don't know. I just feel that's, there has to be a middle ground and it doesn't For sure. seem to be one. Like, sometimes. you know, I don't, and it's funny because like even this, I'm like, oh, what if we come off as two guys that are just complaining about what it's like <laughs> to be a guy or what it's like to be a dude. But, <laughs> yeah. but like to some extent, it's like, if, if you and I bring nothing, if you and I do not provide anything other than like, well, okay. Cause are you supposed to provide something to be in a relationship? Like, are you supposed to provide something? I think you should provide support or like comfort. I think on equal ends, that's the thing is that sometimes you're, you're under the impression that you have to maybe be the bigger provider. You know, you have to be delivering the bigger chunk to the family or to the relationship. Whereas I just feel that both individuals equally should be providers, right? If mm. the woman provides more than the men, then that's okay. As well as the men provides more than the woman, as much as it's okay that both are on equal footing, right? But maybe there's this expectation sometimes that the man, no matter what has to be the bigger provider, you know, it's changing. Obviously we're in, the, in an era where those type of questions are being asked, but if you look back in time, that pretty much was the standard, right? The man had to be the, the person who provided the most or that at least had a bigger chunk financially uh, in the family and the woman would provide, but at a lesser degree. And it wasn't expected for her to be the bigger provider. You know, mm. but once again, if it, I'm saying if we're looking back in time. Yeah, no. And that's why like, it's almost like we need a new definition or like we need a new, <laughs> we need a new fucking 
what is a man description. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> we need to all sure. come up with it as a world, as so many- as like humans we need to be like okay wait maybe men should be this <laughs> instead yeah. of cause... yeah yeah sorry <laughs> um, we're on fire just, today you and i, I just cut each just other like, off jeez <laughs> left and but right honestly, so, so so many men also or children uh, guys growing up also don't know like what it is to be a man what that definition is so some of them are confused and kind of don't know like where to 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 have a certain guide there isn't a rule book of how to be a man but i guess to have more of a consensus on what it is to be a man in a modern time is something that we do have to talk about and develop and elaborate on right because being a man in 2020 is completely different than being a man in 1980 for instance you know and i don't think we've really worked on that new definition of what it is to be a man today and i think that's what leads to a lot of guys being confused as to like what do i have to display to to feel that I am a, a man in this world, you know? Mm-hmm. I think um, one of those two is like the fact that we were, al- well, we weren't alive in the eighties, but mm-hmm. um, the fact that we were raised in a, like, I feel like we're the age or we're the generation, you and I, that are going through that difference mm-hmm. because we were still yes, raised in the stoic, no emotion, no mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But now as adults, we're, we're discovering it's okay to open up. Yeah. And I don't know about younger generations and I hope they feel like it's okay to open up. Um, but I think like it's happening throughout our, our years. So no matter what happens, I still always go back to like your brain automatically still goes back to what you were, what you pretty much grew up thinking or doing. Right. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I've been thinking about this one situation, like nonstop. Um, so this, okay. This is like pretty recent ish, like recent as in few months. Mm. Uh, cause <laughs> what's recent as in a few weeks, like <laughs> nothing, um, but recent as in a few months, um, I was seeing someone for, for, for a bit and, uh, let's just say in that partnership or in that interaction, I was in a good place and therefore I didn't have to, I didn't have to ask for anything, Mm -hmm. but I also didn't have, I didn't want to give like not, whoa, 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 not like I didn't want to give, but like, I didn't want to have to give as in, I trust that you can get where you need to get on your own. And I'm here to support you for everything, but I don't want to give it to you. Like, did you really get it if I gave it to you? And that's just toxic in a partnership to give you everything you need because take me out of the equation. And were you able to achieve any of that? Or like, yeah. So I think uh, my approach to it has always been like, let me help you, but not Mm. do it for you. And like, I'm there. But so that really fell into what am I providing? And I wasn't providing the answer because I didn't want to give the answer. And also because you don't really accept the answer when it's given to you by someone else. You're supposed Mm. to learn that. Anyway, all that to say, here's, and I will describe to you a vivid scene that happened, right? And well, I don't know if that person listens to the podcast, but hey. Um, here's what happened in my head during that Shout moment. To you. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so we were, it's silly, right? Okay. So I'm in a good place. I'm doing good. I myself as a person have, am on top of my mental health. Like mm. when I'm not doing well, I'm good to take care of myself. And this person was struggling the other way around where it wasn't doing so good. And that tends to scare people away. Um, But not me, because I believe that you can get there. You can get the, the, you can get to a good place. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to mean because you're in a bad place now that you'll always be in a bad place unless you accept that that's where you want to stay. Anyway, it be, it came down a lot to like in our discussions about me not giving the answer, Mm -hmm. like not saying you should fix that that way. And that was because I knew that that person did not want the answer anyway. Um, We had talks about that. Did not want the answer, but because, so I ended up in this place where I did not provide anything, but I'm going to tell you of the moment that hit me and that, that I still have been thinking about this week, which is a silly fucking moment. Mm -hmm. We're on the beach. And first of all, I haven't done any, like I haven't, touched someone in public right and like hug like uh, yeah, uh, but we were at the beach while. and 
we were like cuddling, I'd say, like uh, just leaning against each other at the beach. And there's a moment where I was leaning on that person's lap. Like I was lying down on that person's lap and just kind of hugged. And in that moment, what was going on in my head was, you know what? I want to help you and I'm going to go through this. But at the exact same time in that person's head was, you know what? He can't. Mm. Because I couldn't provide the answer, like the, the easy fix. Yeah. And uh, that was like one of the last times, if, if not the last time we saw each other. Like at the moment where in my head, I was like, I am aware that I am not at this place mentally. I still want to help you. And that person's answer was, you can't. Like, and we had a really long talk that day about it. And that's kind of where things <laughs> uh, yeah. broke down. But it was, it was just a strange thing. Like instead of being any type of what a guy normally is, I was just like, fuck it. I just want to be open but also like understand that I don't want to fix it for you. Like I'll be alongside, I'll be like, I'll be on the sideline cheering you on. Like that's my, you know, I'll be like, I'll be there. I'll be your, your favorite cheerleader, but I won't, yeah. I won't be your coach. I won't, I won't give you the play. <laughs> this yeah, is us, at, a, at, us as athletes, yeah. like <laughs> talking about it, but it's like, it's true. Yeah. I, I didn't want to be the coach. I didn't want to say, do this, do that, fix this, fix that. You know, this is your yeah. playbook. No, I, just wanted to be the person saying, you got this. I believe in you. But so I didn't provide, I, I didn't provide. Mm. And, um, at a moment where I was like, you know what? I want to try it. It also came forward as, you know what? He's not providing. And yeah. I think a lot of being a man comes down to this of like, do you provide? Do you? Mm. And then if you don't, you ain't got no value. Like no one's been, True. no one's wanted to be with me because I was just someone in a good place. Like <laughs> I want to be with the, with a partner if she's in a good place. Like if I, if mm. I meet someone, I'm like, fuck, this is someone that's got their life together. I want to be with you. Like, this is going to be cool. Whereas as a guy, I'm someone in a good place and no one goes like, this is sick. I want this in my life. It's like, no, I need more. What do you provide? I Yeah. But I, I think I, I get what you mean in that sense. Whereas, <laughs> You know, I I see our like the relationship with my girlfriend as us being more of a one person supporting the other as opposed to one providing for the other. So I think that the difference between that is that obviously providing you're expecting the person to have the answer for you, right? Whereas supporting is well, the person has to find that answer for themselves, but you're gonna be there to help them along the way. That's how I see it, and that's how I feel is the way to to go about it. And I just think that, oh, I, th I think I just forgot what I was trying to say, but <laughs> in all that, but um, what I was basically trying to, trying to say was that, you know, to, I think we have to see it in a different sense, whereas providing, it's like when you're, when you're looking for a significant other, for instance, most people, they're looking for that person that's going to well, fill their heart or that's going to complete them. You know, and I say, well, I don't think you're this, you should necessarily for something that someone that's going to complete you because you mm -hmm. complete yourself, right? But you're going to have someone who's going to amplify you, who's going to add to your own experience and to your own being, right? You should already as much as possible feel, feel as complete as possible. It's not someone else who's going to make you feel complete. It's yourself, but that person will add to that experience and add to your being. So when we come back to all the, this aspect of, you know, the men having to be the one who is, uh, the one who completes the other person and, or that provides for the other person. I don't think that's the way necessarily to, to view it. It has to be more of a, that person is there to, to support you, to make you better, but it's not going to be the answer for whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think when you, when we ask the question, like, am I a man or what, what is a man? Mm -hmm. I think that after, in, even more after our discussion, I feel like I don't know what that is. I don't <laughs> I don't know what being a man Either. is. I feel like in a weird way, what is it that makes us, I mean, like, yeah, I got a dick between my legs. Like, you know, that's, <laughs> that's about, that's about what makes me, I don't know. Like, it's a strange thing to, but then yeah. again, do we have to separate the two? Not really, but it's yeah. like, we're, you know, our subject is masculinity and what makes you yeah. a man. But like, yeah, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Um, I yeah, do, I do okay. want to add this disclaimer in here because our viewership is mainly not men. <laughs> um, True. 
And so I just want to add this disclaimer that this is our version of it. This is our experience of it. And uh, obviously, if we said something that you're like, this is a 100% wrong, first of all, write a comment about it so that at least, <laughs> at least we do. get to see it. But like, yeah. under, understand that we're two, we're, we're two straight men that have been yeah. raised by other people. And this is our talk of our experience. We're not at all yeah. saying this is how it should be. For one thing, we've been clarifying exactly. yeah. <laughs> that we exactly. want. Like we're seeing, you know, you and I, we, we, we've lived as in, in this certain way, like you said, because of people who've influ influenced us. And that's just the way that we view our position in this world. And it's nowhere near the, the model, right? The base model. And is there even a base model? I don't even know at this point. I don't, really think so because mm -hmm. it's lived differently from one person to the next you know so it's once again it's just how we f how we feel how we perceived ourselves in this world and our role as you know quote unquote men in this world yeah um time's actually up my friend uh despite the little break it's been like <laughs> it's we're close to 45 uh yeah. I feel like we barely touched on it too. Yeah. Masculinity it's, is such a definitely subject. Definitely a big topic. Yeah, it's definitely a big topic and you know, we we barely scratched the surface yeah. <laughs> on on that topic, you know. Um, but we can <laughs> we can give everyone a chance to let us know if they want to hear more about it. I think we're mm. currently recording another episode after this one. Um, but we won't we won't do a follow-up masculinity right away, but if if you want us to do a a follow up to this. If you want us to dive deeper into our perspective on masculinity, maybe type it in the comments. And if there's enough interest in it, maybe we'll do a like a follow up, go deeper into things because we barely scratched the surface here. But it's a really big yeah. subject. And uh, yeah. while while you were deafened, that's exactly what I said. I I was pretty much saying that the odds of us getting through the whole subject uh, within one episode were was pretty low. Yeah. But um. I don't even know, like, did we learn anything? Did we make a point out of anything? For one thing, I've learned that I, obviously change needs to happen. Mm. But like, how is that going to happen? Like men from many generations are still around. Your dad's still around. Like a, whoever that fucking stepdad is, is possibly still. I don't fucking know if he's still alive. I don't care. Yeah. But like, there's still, it's a, it's a strange transition, I think. Yeah. I feel the fact, though, that we've, you know, that conversations have been initiated in the past few years, because this is still something that's pretty recent in the sense of like the, what is the <clears throat> definition of a man today? Mm -hmm. I think it's something that's come to light recently, and it's good that we're at least talking about it at this point. You know, where we come to a c conclusion one day about it, just like every other topic that we've had, I'm not quite sure <laughs> that there'll be a definite answer yeah. but the fact that we're talking about it at, at least makes us understand that there is a certain issue when it comes to what is your typical uh man and what is masculinity mm -hmm. and that to be able to discuss it talk about it and to you know, try to find some sort of consensus as to what it is i think is already a, a good start yeah so i hope you enjoyed today's episode be sure to leave us a nice comment or a bad comment, whatever you want. Be sure to leave a comment. Tell us something. Yes. Like I said, Chris mainly reads the comments. He doesn't receive my DMs that you send me about the podcast. I love receiving it, but I always feel bad because we're two hosts and he doesn't get to hear that message. Um, but if you do want to reach out to Chris on Twitter, it's at Chris the Stoic. Exactly. I know you're at now. I don't even have Twitter and I know <laughs> you're you at. So at Chris the Stoic, if you, if ever you want to, maybe I'll put it in the description. That way people can find you. Um, but yeah. And, but otherwise you can just write a comment too. That way we both <laughs> see it. Stop being secretive in the DMs. Okay. Just write a comment about it. Uh, have, a, share. <laughs> have a good day, everyone. We'll be back for another episode next week.